Morning, Arsene. Could we start with your reaction to the news that Santi Cazorla requires surgery? For me, it's very bad news. Uh, because you know always the date of a surgery, but never the date where the player will play again. And I always try to put absolutely everything in place to avoid surgery. Because uh, uh, it creates always anxiety and uh, rehab. And uh, overall, I think uh, when you can avoid it, you have to avoid it. But in this case, Unfortunately, we have come to uh, that conclusion and uh, now they tell me that he will be out for two months at least, but two months can sometimes be three as well. Have you spoken to Santi at all? What's he said? Look, Santi is uh, desperate to play football. Uh, he's only happy on the football pitch. I've spoken to him, of course, but... Uh, uh, he himself wants to get out of that uh, vicious circle, going out and uh, coming in again, and uh, wants just to cure it. In terms of the rest of your team news, what can you tell us ahead of tomorrow's trip? Well, uh, we have uh, more and then he uh, came out of our last game and uh, with sickness. Uh, we'll test him today. And apart from that, uh, everybody else should be available. Approaching the tough run of games now, four of your next five in all competitions are away from home. What's the best way to deal with that? Focus on the next one and uh, rely on the confidence we have rebuilt uh, with uh, the win against Bournemouth. And uh, overall, I believe that uh, uh, from the strengths we have shown away from home, uh, rely on the belief that we can do well e everywhere, absolutely everywhere. Ten days ago, Arsene, you seemed to be reasonably optimistic about Santi Cazorla. Yeah, I was. So, you know, perhaps two weeks he'll be, he'll be training and then, then two weeks after that. So, so what's happened? What, what's gone wrong? What's going wrong is that he has an inflammation at the back of his foot that uh, nobody knows really where it comes from. And uh, uh, because he has been treated against this inflammation, and uh, that uh, the injections, the anti-inflammatory, have not uh, got rid of it. The surgeon, the specialist we uh, consulted, decided to have an exploratory uh, surgery. That means open and see what's, what's going on in there. The fact that you say he's going to be out for at least two months, maybe three, does that mean that you need to get someone in come January? Is that something that you will now look at? Getting a replacement? No, not really, no. We have, uh, in midfield, we have uh, many players, you know. But uh, uh, there's two reasons. First of all, we have the number and the quality. But secondly, in January, in the transfer market, you will not necessarily find the Cazorla, even if you wanted to. Listen, I'm, I'm sure it will raise questions again about players of Arsenal having long-term injuries. Are you still happy with the way things are at this club? Yes, of course, because uh, I believe on the injury front this season we have been very strong. You know, we had not uh, many injuries. We are the injuries where you can question uh, the preparation or uh, the care of the players, that is uh, muscular injuries. We had very few, uh, but uh, there are accidental injuries uh, down to the structure of your body or to the repeated competition that you cannot do anything about it and that's uh, Santi Cazorla is purely accidental. It's a kick at the start on the back of his foot. Update us please on Matthew Dabucci. He came off against Southampton. He was due to have a scan. Do you know the results of that scan? It's a severe hamstring injury, yes. Six weeks, I think. How frustrating is that? How disappointing is that? given that actually it was his first match back here. Look, it's frustrating for me, but uh, even more for him, because he fights very hard. He's a guy with exceptional attitude and uh, is very serious. And uh, overall, I think uh, that uh, uh, he is absolutely uh, disappointed, but he's as well a fighter. He will fight to come back. 
Incidentally, I uh, forget to tell you that I thought that Giro would be available for tomorrow, but uh, the last news I got, uh, uh, he might not be available for tomorrow unless he has a test today. And uh, but certainly for Tuesday, he will be available. How good is it to have Danny Welbeck back in training? Let's try and it's great, but uh, he's not. Uh, he's at least four weeks away from playing again. Um, Gabrielle sent a very moving message to those people who mm. lost their lives in the, the plane crash um, in South America. Uh, how has he been? Is he in the right frame of mind to play this weekend? Yes, I think so. I will have a chat with him today, but. Uh, uh, if, he, if he is in the right frame of mind, he will play. What do you sense about his frame of mind? Uh, as you said, he has sent a very emotional message to, to the families of people involved in this crash, but uh, he still played on uh, Wednesday night, and I think uh, if he has recovered well physically, I will play him, and mentally as well. Listen, how do you reflect on this fixture last season finished as a 3-3 draw. <laughs> Do you remember it? Well, you I remember it, it because well. uh, uh, we were 2 nil up, cruising and uh, playing well, and suddenly it was 2-2 just before half-time. We conceded two goals after we were 3-2 down just after half-time. And uh, I think it's Kosienu equalised after for the 3-3. Three, three. And uh, we came out, it was an important game for us at that stage of the season. And uh, we came out of it disappointed because when you're 2 nil up, you expect to win the game. And uh, we conceded two cheap goals. On the day, uh, in fact, it was Carroll who, uh, who scored two good goals. Um, a couple more, if I, if I may, just very quickly. Um, Gareth Southgate is the, the new England boss. I don't think it surprised too many people. Um, no, it didn't surprise you nor me. <laughs> Did the FA ever speak to you? I speak always with the FA because uh, I'm a long time in English football, so when uh, things go on, uh, sometimes they uh, contact me, yes. Did they ever speak to you about the job? Look, uh, I, I need to keep confidential my conversations with the FA. A Theo Walcott has become a world record holder, I gather. Yes. Does that surprise you? Does it surprise you? No. Uh, because uh, it was not necessarily for what I expected him to be a world record holder because uh, uh, it's true that uh, to take the ball from the crane uh, and to beat the distance and all these super skillful players, uh, you need a super touch. How impressed were you? Did, were, you were you watching? Did you see it? No, I didn't see it. No. Were you impressed by what he did? Yeah, of course. Controlling a ball from 34 metres up, mm -hmm. dropped. Yeah, I think you need to do four touches, and uh, so it's absolutely great. He has a great focus uh, capacity, Theo, and uh, uh, of course he's more known for his pace, for the quality of his runs and the quality of his finishing, and less uh, uh, for uh, the technical skill, and it shows that he has uh, as well uh, that in his locker. Awesome. There's not many things that you do for the first time in the Premier League after being involved for 20 years, but going to the Olympic Stadium, the London Stadium as it's now called, will be a first. Mm -hmm. How have you prepared for that? Well, before we knew exactly what was expecting us uh, at West Ham, you know, uh, I preferred even the first version of, uh, of the West Ham Stadium. That means when it was very tight, when they built a new stand, the distances were a bit bigger. And I think the most... Uh, Intimidating stadium was the first one I I, I knew, but uh, this time, for for them it's a bit uh, like we moved when we moved to the Emirates. You know, we feel a bit for a while on a neutral ground, and uh, after that, uh, I think I believe the best way to prepare is just to focus on what we want to do and uh, start in a very strong way. Do you think it gives you that incentive to go there on the front foot? I know it's what Arsenal usually do anyway, but in terms of the results that they had, the start they've had at that stadium? We will try. 
we'll try to to have a strong start, of course, but uh, uh, when you look at the squad of West Ham, uh, they have a very strong squad. They have uh, uh, players with of top quality, so at some stage, uh, I think recently they've picked up. They had a difficult start of the scene, but recently they've picked up quality-wise and uh, they played well at Tottenham, they played well at Manchester United and uh, difficult fixtures. So overall, I think uh, it will be a very uh, tight game, very intense one. Their top player has come in for a bit of criticism this week, Dimitri Payet. What do you make of, of when players like that, that have obviously shone in the Premier League last season and go through a slight dip, come under this sort of criticism? Do you think it's fair? Not really, because uh, Payet is now even in France uh, one of the star players, you know, and overall uh, I believe that uh, uh, he has realised maybe a bit late in his career or fulfilled all his potential and uh, certainly uh, West Ham was one of the triggers for him uh, coming to English football, having to adapt and uh, show that he has a potential. Not only did he convince everybody in England last year that he's a top-class player, but as well through that performance, he won his place in the European Championship with the national team. Do you have any sympathy for Slavan Bilic at the moment? Because you talk about how you orchestrated the move to the Emirates. It's a similar situation. He didn't get given the money. He's had to spend cheap. And there's a lot of criticism for the players that he's brought in. Look, I have sympathy for every manager, you know, uh, because I, uh, I know what uh, you go through when you don't have... Uh, always the expected results, but uh, I think he has done a very good job there and uh, that uh, he has built a very strong squad and I'm sure that will come out for on a longer distance. Have you actually been to the stadium? Did you go to the Olympics? I went to the Olympic Village when there was the Olympic Games uh, to meet some athletes. But I couldn't go to the Olympic Games, no. I mean, you, you, obviously you mentioned your own stadium move. Just how difficult was it when you left Highbury to make the Emirates home? It takes a few years. Mm. What, what because you have, to build, you have to build memories, you know, and uh, make a little history. And uh, for a while, uh, uh, when you moved uh, in... Uh, Marble Hall at Highbury, it was full of history and suddenly you moved to, to a stadium where no, there was nothing happened before you came in there and uh, you feel a bit lonely there and on a neutral ground so you have to rebuild a kind of environment for the results you have made before, to create some nights. For the supporters it's the same, you know, they sit every time next to the same guy and they, say, they have to talk. You remember last time here we beat this team and suddenly uh, they, they, they sit away from home. When you're the, when you're the manager of the, the, the team that's moved into a new stadium, is there anything you can do to help the players? Or is it just time that helps it? You, you try, but you cannot create artificially something that doesn't exist. You know? And uh, I feel as well the players on the ground before, when you play the Tiberi, you have a kind of picture. Uh, when you play up front as well, you know where the goal is because the signals coming from a crowd, you know exactly, you know where the adverts are. And sometimes you have no time to make your decision, but you have a reference, a geographical reference when you stand on the pitch that is linked with, uh, with the stadium. You, you, you link with it and you have to recreate that. Just a final couple on the injuries. Um, you mentioned Debussy for six weeks. Will that rule him out of going out on loan? There's been talk about him maybe leaving in January. Yes, of course. Uh, I suppose we are now in December. Uh, until mid-January, will not really be available. I hope he's a, he's always a quicker than expected, uh, Mathieu. But uh, uh, you know, people. Uh, asked why I didn't play him, uh, for example, against Paris Saint-Germain. I had the temptation to play him against Paris Saint-Germain, but he had only 70 minutes in the under-23, and it was maybe even a bit early after, but uh, usually he recovers quickly. Mm. 
And, and just on Santi, I mean, do you have any regrets about the way that has been handled? No. Uh, we make a debrief about the whole situation, you know. It's for me a bit difficult at the moment to see a step by step exactly what happened all along. Because we have always, uh, uh, we have always these problems inside the clubs. When the guy is injured, if he's Spanish, he wants to go to Spain. If he's French, he wants to go to France. If he's English, he wants to go to England, you know. And uh, there's always that little conflict between uh, uh, the medical care that you have inside the club and, of course, the freedom of everybody to be treated where he wants to be treated. And uh, we try always to find a good compromise by good communication uh, with, uh, with people who in their local country and uh, usually it works very well. But it's normal that if you have something that you want to have as well a uh, specialist in your own country because that's where you have been educated. But as you, as you sort of look at it now, you don't sort of think, oh, I wish we'd done something different? No, I don't, uh, I don't because we had uh, always liaised with uh, Santi's people and uh, we have treated him in the way we wanted to treat him, you know, it's, it's always very sensitive. Inflammations, bo uh, bone inflammations, it's always, you never know how long it lasts. Thank you very much.